Okay. So for Haberman's section 1.2, um, what is the main goal? Well, the goal is to make sense of the heat equation, essentially. And um, in this case, we're going to make sense of du dt is equal to k d squared u dx squared. Um, <clears throat> here, we're assuming that u is a function of two variables, x and t. Our interpretation is that x will be a spatial variable, okay? Um, and then t is going to be a time variable. Okay. Um, and so when I say make sense of this, what I mean is we're going to derive this equation and some variants of it from physical principles. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so motivating question then is how does heat conduct in a um, one-dimensional rod. Okay. So two comments. First of all, heat. What do we mean when we say heat? Well, um, in the end, generally, we'll talk about the temperature of the material. Um, just it's something measurable, it's something that we're comfortable with, et cetera. Um, but the starting point for this derivation will actually use a different quantity. Um, it's called thermal energy. Okay? Um, but in the end, we want to talk about uh, temperature and how temperature moves, um, conducts and diffuses. The other comment is um, you know, that we're working with this special kind of geometry of the space, this uh, one-dimensional rod. Um, and so in practice, this 1D rod will treat as an interval, okay? We're going to ignore the fact that it has, it's a cylinder, I'm just gonna pretend it's a line segment, um, just as a starting point. Later on, we'll develop some tools to treat some of these problems in more generality, okay? Um, but this is gonna be our starting point. Um, okay, and so as a picture, we'll be drawing lots, lots of pictures throughout this course. So our rod is gonna look something like this, okay? Um, we're going to treat it as an interval. So maybe an endpoint there, an endpoint there, and a line segment, okay? And um, to quantify everything and start to kind of be able to treat this as a differential equation, um, we need to coordinateize everything, okay? So our coordinate system, we're gonna use X. This is a coordinate along this interval. So over here, we're gonna say X is equal to zero. Over here, the value of X is just gonna be the length of the rod, okay? Okay, so let's start getting closer. Let's incorporate some notion of heat, okay? Um, so the notion of heat that we're gonna start with, it's not temperature, but rather a quantity called thermal energy density. Okay, um, so things to note here. <clears throat> so thermal energy thermal energy. This is going to have units and joules. Right? It's a form of energy. Um, the other piece is density. This is going to have units, say um, meters, negative three or inverse volume, okay? <clears throat> so in this derivation, so the fact that we're using inverse volume 
um, we are going to take into consideration kind of the, the three-dimensional aspect of the cylinder, okay? Um, but that's just for this quantity. When we actually go to solve um, and set up the differential equation, um, we'll be making a lot of assumptions to ignore kind of the, the um, what you might call the lateral aspect of this stuff. Okay. okay. Um, so let's give this quantity a name. We're going to call this E of XT. Okay. And my zoom seems to be frozen. Okay. And then E of XT is going to have units. Oh, there we go. Okay. E of XT is going to have units joules per meter cube. Okay. Okay. So question then is, so let me copy this diagram here. Um, so now we want to know what the energy per thin slice is going to be for this um, 1D rod. Zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the thin slice. Um, so I'm going to pick this region right here. And then maybe a little over there. So kind of the length along the rod for the slice is going to be delta x. And we're going to say the area of one of the faces of the slice. So if you were to cut this rod and measure the area of what you end up with, that's going to be A. So now the question is, right, what is the energy for this thin slice? Okay. Well, we have a notion of thermal energy density, right? We know how much energy there is per volume element. Okay. And we have enough information here to compute volumes, right? We have an area and uh, area of a face and the width of, um, of this slice, okay? So, what that tells us then is that, so the heat energy per thin slice is going to be, right, our, our thermal energy density um, times the area of the slice times the width of the slice. Again, this has units of joules per, um, per volume, say, or joules per meter cubed. This has units um, meter squared. This has units meter. So dimensionality wise, um, we end up with joules, which is a notion of energy um, and we're good to go. Okay. okay. Um, Cool, so we've, we've started to set up you know, the quantities that we're interested in. Next question then, getting closer to the PDE is, how does um, heat energy, we'll say behave? Okay, um, so here, this is kind of just static in time, right? We pick a point on the rod, we can compute the energy, but now we want to know how that, how the energy at that point, or the energy in that thin slice, how that varies over time. Okay. Um, so for this, we're going to say is so. Question is so essentially what we're asking is what is the rate of change of um, heat energy. in time, okay? Um, so that's gonna be a time derivative of this quantity. 
Well, what should this be? Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to assume for simplicity is that, so scrolling back up here. So what we're going to assume um, for simplicity is that heat is only going to flow in the x direction, okay? We're not gonna lose any heat kind of on the boundary of this rod. Okay? Um, so what I mean by that is that um, heat can only flow kind of across these faces in that direction or maybe in this direction. Um, but heat cannot flow out there. So heat's only going to flow in the x direction. Um, okay. So what the rate of change of heat energy will be, right? It will depend on how much heat is flowing across kind of the boundaries for this slice. Okay. It's because we're not going to lose anything kind of out there, just across there. Um, so written out, so rate of change, heat energy and time is the heat energy um, flowing across boundaries in time. plus whatever heat is generated um, inside for time unit. Um, so this last term here, you can interpret this as either you have maybe like a chemical reaction within the rod or it's an approximation, you're holding a lighter to the rod or something like that. Okay. Um, okay, so this is how heat energy kind of will flow within the rod, okay? Um, you're either gonna lose things across the boundary for your slice, or you're gonna have heat energy that's generated or lost, just uh, kind of appears or disappears within that slice, okay? And so now what we want to do is quantify each of these things. So as I said before, um, so the rate of change of heat energy and time, that's going to be a time derivative okay, of this quantity right here, because this is that the total heat energy in the slice. Okay. So we want to take a time derivative of E of XT um, A delta X. That's gonna be uh, this heat energy flowing across boundaries in time, which we'll come back to. Okay. Plus um, heat energy generated inside. And so this, we're gonna, we're gonna use a black box function, say Q of XT, um, so that we're gonna have as give units joules per um, meter cubed. Um, just for simplicity. And so then what is the total amount of energy in that slice? Joules per meter cubed times meter squared times um, meter. So joules in the end, okay? So we're almost there. Now we just need to figure out, right? We need to quantify what this heat energy flowing across the boundaries in time is, okay? So for that, draw another picture, okay? So this is the same slice from before. Say so this is at coordinate X. This is at coordinate X plus small change delta X. Okay. Um, and so to quantify this heat flow, what we're going to do is talk about um, kind of this notion of flux, say. So let me... Just go ahead and write it out and then we'll talk through it. Um, yeah, so how we're gonna quantify the flow across the boundaries is via 
this quantity or this function we'll call phi, okay, which again depends on where you are and when you are. Um, let's say this is a flux. And this is just a general notion of how much energy or some quantity is flowing. Okay. And so, um, yeah. Okay. And so the units that we're going to use for this flux. So let me write it here. So phi is heat flux or the amount that heat flows or the units, thermal energy. So joules um, per time. So thermal energy per time flowing to the right per unit surface area or per meter squared. Okay. Um, so units wise, what we would expect, well, if we multiply phi by, um, by, by, by surface area or surface, I don't know, element meter squared, then we should end up with joules per time, which is the same quantity that we see in this partial derivative, okay? Um, and uh, phi is gonna be a scalar, it's just gonna output a number and that's gonna, so the value of phi xt, say right there, that's gonna tell you how much heat energy is flowing into that point from the left, so left to right, okay? If phi is negative, that means that heat is flowing from right to left, okay? But yeah, so that's, so this flux right here, phi of x comma t, that's how much heat is flowing into um, this thin slice at that point. Um, how else can we lose heat in the rod? Well, we can lose heat if it flows um, out of this boundary piece um, here on the right. So what's the value here? Well, this is phi at x uh, x plus delta x at whatever time. Okay. So, uh, can I zoom out a little bit? Okay, so coming back here, right? So the question was, right, what is the heat energy flowing across the boundaries in time? Okay, we're measuring the total heat energy in here. How much heat can we gain? Well, it's whatever comes in um, from this left boundary segment, okay? And whatever heat flow comes in, we're gonna add that to the total thermal energy inside. Okay. Um, so we're gonna pick up a, a phi of x comma t. Um, just times whatever that surface area element is. And so how else can things change? Well, how else can the energy change? Well, we're going to lose whatever, whatever energy flows out from the right. Okay? And so we'll just add a minus, let me try it down here, minus, V of x plus delta x comma t, again, times the area L. Okay. And of course, if your energy is instead, if, right, if instead of the flow being from left to right, it's from right to left, um, phi of x t and phi of x plus delta x comma t, those are going to change signs just because the flow is going in a different direction. Okay. If phi of x t, um, if you have things flowing in from the left and the right, 
then phi of x plus delta x comma t, um, that's going to be positive. And so the thermal energy in your thin slice, that's just going to keep going up. Okay. Um, so this notational convention is just based on this picture, but we've left enough unsaid so that maybe this actual quantity is negative when we have heat flowing um, from the right to the left across that boundary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. So this is kind of the first approximation okay, to how heat energy flows. And now what we're going to do is take a limit, essentially. Okay. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this equation up here, down here. So we have a um, DDT, E of X T A delta X, okay, partial derivative. Um, in this case, A and delta X don't depend on time. So this partial derivative just affects this E of X comma T. And so um, this is going to be approximately um, I'm going to write it as phi of x t a minus phi of x plus delta x t a. Okay, that's just copying over that uh, the fluxes from before. Um, in each case here, right, we have an a, so we can pull that out. I'm going to erase these. And then that final term was um, plus Q of X T A delta X. Okay? And this was that source, whatever heat is spontaneously generated or lost. Okay. Um, so what you'll notice is that kind of on each side of the equality here, approximation since we're working with these thin slices, um, on each side we have an A, an A, and an A. So if we divide by A, um, let me draw it like this. We're going to remove those. Okay. Um, we have a delta X and a delta X and no delta X. Okay. So if we divide by delta X, we're gonna lose those two. And then over here, we're gonna get an over delta X. Okay, so just copying things over, what we're ending up with is DDT of EXT, which was that thermal energy density. This is going to be approximately phi of XT um, minus phi of X plus delta XT over delta X plus Q of XT. And that was our analysis for, um, I still have it copied, nice. Right, for this rod here, that was our analysis for kind of this thin segment right there, okay? So then the question is, well, right, what if we have a thinner segment or an even thinner segment? Um, what if we let the segment get so thin so that we um, right, really get to approximate that instantaneous change in energy? Well, that's a limit. Um, so, all right, so for all of this as a limit, um, delta X goes to zero. What we're going to end up with then is Dt e of x t, okay, the same term. Um, this piece right here is almost the partial derivative in x of phi. It's just um, 
kind of we have that increment that step forward kind of on the other side. Right? So I'll write it out minus um, d phi dx plus then whatever this term is, right? And so this negative sign comes because these two um, pieces are flipped according to the usual definition of derivative. Okay. Um, this is our starting point for um, everything else that we'll do here. So the remaining questions are, <clears throat> Um, so this equation is in terms of kind of two unknowns, say. We have the thermal um, energy density, okay? and it also depends on flux. Okay? And so what we'd like to do is say, well, um, let's convert things so that um, instead of being in terms of thermal energy density, instead of being in terms of this unknown flux, we would like to describe things in terms of temperature, okay? And we would also like to figure out what this flux, like what it is. Can we describe this flux in terms of um, temperature or some other quantity? Okay. Um, 